Hey, what do you think you're doing? Hey, get out of it. Why are you even at my live station right now? I swear to God, if you're live right now, I'm going to lose my mind, dude. Where did you go? Where did you go? You're live. You're live. Great. What's going on, guys? I guess we're going to do a live show. <laughs> I hope that came across okay. What's going on, everyone? New England Bass, what's going on, man? Hey, can you do me a favor and just let me know if I have good audio and stuff right now? I just want to make sure because clearly I didn't set this up. Just want to, I want to go live. I didn't have time to make a video today uh, at all. I didn't have time to do all the editing this week. I've had an extremely busy week that we'll talk about more on Monday. So I just want to go live and uh, kind of do what I was going to do normally for the video, just without the edits and stuff like that. So we're going to talk a little bit about my spring tackle selections and what I'm going to be throwing and what's now in my infamous blue tackle bag. So I got a lot of very cool springtime baits, some lures I've never tried. Um, you guys have been following the channel for a little while. You know that I'm not really big on lures and stuff, so I picked up some more crankbaits and lipless crankbaits, jerk baits, spinner baits, every kind of bait, man. And, of course, I've upgraded a lot of my soft plastics, no longer just kind of Senkos and Cross and Jigs. So <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm going to get into it, man, with you guys. And what I kind of want to do – for those of you that are going to be slowly joining or whatever, um, this really doesn't apply too much during the live broadcast, uh, rebroadcast, sorry, live. Um, but if you guys get any questions about why I'm choosing to throw what I'm going to show you, um, by all means, ask it and I'll get to you guys um, as we go. So we're going to start like right away. I want to keep this as much of like a real video as possible. I don't want to take up too much time today at all. Uh, but I definitely wanted to show you guys what I got going on. So I only got three Plano boxes here. And the reason why I only have three is because I've chosen to set up my baits only for the purpose of water condition. So right here is my clear water box. Look at my atrocious handwriting. That's so terrible. It's so bad, right? Oh, but I do have this sweet ride-along fishing shirt on. You guys like that? That's right. So I'm going to flip this camera around. We're going to get into it. We're going to kind of do the, the, the hands in front of the camera kind of video. So enjoy the ride there. Look at Nick's computer station. It's so messy. She's going to kill me that that's on film, but that'll be okay. So clear water box. How's that? That working for you guys? Cool, cool. We open her up. Sorry for all the shaky cam. As you guys can see, maybe see, hopefully see. Let me raise this up a little on the tripod here. What do we got? What do we got? Uh, this is not the best choice to do this live, I got to admit. But we were running really short on time today so this is what we're, this is what we're dealing with all right cool man awesome awesome so first up is my plastics for clear water these are just your classic yum dingers in that baby bass color i'm gonna explain a little bit more on why i went color situation uh a little after we get out of the clear box because this is probably the one i use the least but this is that baby bass color you can kind of see the hints of green I went with the yum dingers on this one because they're uh, they're nice and cheap. Plus, there's not too much green. I can't get this thing to focus. There's not too much green. There we go. So, yum dingers for the soft plastic setup. Got these uh, these shad color baits. The focus is going to be the serious issue today. There we go. Those shad colors. Shad's always a winner, right? Of course, I got some. Actually, I don't know what these are. What? I don't know what color these are. This doesn't actually tell me. But it looks more like a, uh, a watermelon with like a gold, green, orange fleck. There we go. 
That's a more of a finesse style beat. Got some white flukes in there. You know what? That worked out really well. White flukes, of course, the Zoom Super Fluke. Can't ever go wrong with the Zoom Super Fluke. My go-to bait. This is the uh, the Strike King Shimmy Stick and Watermelon. This is horrendous. That's what I get for trying a new camera too, huh? There it is. Um, got some big bite baits, little finesse swim baits, nothing too special. And of course, some KTEX swim baits for swim jigs. Now, the big thing that I hope you guys noticed was the colors. And with a clear box, I'm going for a more natural presentation. And I'll explain that as well. But let's see if I can't show you a little bit better here. If you see this, somewhat clear here. Uh, over here in this pocket is a one aught Trapper Tackle Extra Wide Gap Hook. And I went with one aught uh, because... It's, it's clear water. It's going to work better with those finesse style baits, something not too big, nothing too spooky. And y'all know I love trapper tackles, so had to go with the trapper tackle hook. I also got some two-watt trapper tackles. I got some three-watt trapper tackles in here as well. I got some uh, Nico rig hooks. And these look like swivels. Can't leave home without the swivels. I got smaller bullet-style weights in here. Those are about a quarter ounce. This is just a swim jig that was floating around in there. Got a nice clear jerk bait. And then I got some small crank baits, an inline spinner, some uh, some more deep diving style crank baits. Those more natural colors. This is all Walmart stuff, man. Got some deep diving crank baits here. This one's got a nice rattle. I actually got this in the MTB unboxing, if you guys saw that. Pretty cool stuff. Spinner baits and the rest of the plastics. That is clear water. Let's flip this around. This is so chaotic. This was not well planned at all, right? You can totally tell too. Very last minute. So the reason why I have divided my boxes by clear water Stained water, and of course, muddy water, is because I strongly believe that you have to fish a bait appropriately um, based on the water condition. You know, they say that a bass's eyesight is about three times or 30 times better than us um, under the water. And they can see more. They have more of a, a field of view. So when, when you're fishing something in the water, you know, a lot of guys will tell you, man, you can't tie on braid directly. Um, because it's going to spook the fish. I'm not really a firm believer in that. When I fish jigs, um, and especially when I live bait, I go straight braid because I'm not taking any chances with those big fish. But I do think basing your tackle on the water condition is the only sensible thing to do. You can use, you can't really throw a black and blue in crystal clear water and expect to catch a fish because it's so unnatural looking, if that makes sense. <laughs> And this is just me. This is just how I fish. I want to kind of give you guys a peek into what I do. If you guys have any questions about any of the tackle, like I said earlier, just to kind of recap, please feel free to ask me about it on why I make these decisions or, or whatever have you, because I'm going to try to do my best to explain why I do what I do anyway. The other two boxes, I'm probably not going to show you that same way because that got a little complicated, especially for a live video. But my stain box... This is my favorite box. So right here, these are some two-watt Gamakatsus loaded up with two-watt trapper tackles. These are some five-watt um, straight shank hooks, bigger 3 8 ounce bullet weights, bobber stops, swivels, and, of course, the rest of the baits. Now, some of the things I want to point out in here, Shaky Kim, are the color patterns that I chose. <coughs> So, for instance, this is where I like to keep all of my – see, we can't get it to focus again. All of my green pumpkin stuff is in here. So, this is a green pumpkin finesse bait. 
I got some power worms by power bait. If you guys aren't using power worms, I don't know what you're doing with your life. I'll take the hit on that one. Power worms have caught me more fish than anything else. This color I only throw in stained or muddy water, um, but I usually use this for deeper stained water more than anything else. There we are. Um, I really like this color, so I love them to death. Power worms is just such a nice, nice finesse bait. I usually weightless Texas rig them. Uh, and I've, I've really have, I've had more success catching fish with those things than with anything else. Strike King, Gary Yamamoto, whatever. Um, power worms, man. New England Bass says, if you don't have any yet, get some square bill crank baits for clear and stained water. It's funny you said that. Thank you so much, dude, because you bring up an interesting point. The lure that I have tied on right now, it's my Royale Legend combo, which is my go-to jerk and crank rod, is a big old fat 2.5 square bill that I plan on using during spawn season to just burn over the beds. It has like this really nice kind of bluegill pattern to it. Super shallow diving, square bill, really erratic action in the water. No rattle. Um I wish it had a rattle, but I actually get that in my LTB box. So there's really nothing I can do about that. But I have been looking at some other square bills just because I think they're going to be money um, come spawn season. So really love those. Um, this is just your standard like Walmart jig, but this is one of my favorite colors. My favorite all-time jig color is PB&J. Um, but these like pumpkin ones do awesome too around here stained water oh yeah dude dewey uh dewey dewey cash says his favorite square bill is sexy shad couldn't agree more one of the one of the greatest square bill producers ever one of my other favorite jig colors right here this is a little more green uh it reminds me of watermelon i actually have a uh a pit boss tied on it right now but i love this one i cut this one up a little bit just to give it a much better action in the water Having a really hard time with this whole focus thing. But y'all get the point, man. This one's really beat up. This one's heavily used. Not my favorite jigs, though. I will show you my favorite jig in a minute. Got a white one, of course, with a fluke attached to it. Nice little swim rig right there. Not cut down because I love the action of this in the water. Um, this, actually, I normally throw in clear water. But I thought this had such a nice salt and pepper profile to it that I, I can actually throw this in stained water, but as you can see from the head, it's not nearly as used up because it's not something I throw often. But in here, I also have, you know, my favorite like pickerel colors for a jerk bait. Uh, not pickerel, I'm so sorry. Perch. Um, got a crawfish jerk bait in here. Uh, got a lot of like natural shad colored lipless crankbaits and stuff. I haven't switched these over to trapper tackle yet, but I imagine that I will. Um, but I do like the red eye. Dude, this focus is killing me. There we go. I do like the red eye with the red hooks up front. I think that gives it an awesome action. And then I got like a baby bass in here and some other stuff. So when we talk about stained water, when we talk about stained water, we're talking about you can kind of get a little more crazy with your presentation. You don't have to be as natural because the water is a little darker. When the water is darker, you can kind of go a little crazy. This whole video, before I go any further, was actually inspired by Debo's Fishing. You guys have heard me talk about him a little bit over the last three weeks. And I originally wanted to make a full, like, kind of follow-up reply video to one of his. He's doing this awesome series right now. If you guys haven't subscribed to him yet, please go check him out, Debo's Fishing. Um, but he does this really awesome demonstration of, like, really consolidating down your tackle. He's a funny guy. He does it in a funny way. He's, he's the Bill Nye of the fishing industry. So a wonderful dude. Um, and he actually just did one talking about this same concept. It's something him and I have talked about before, which is wonderful. Um, and, and I'm super glad that he's doing it. I was just kind of wish I had got to it a little bit quicker, but Debo, this is for you, man. This is essentially my follow-up. You guys will find out more why I didn't have time to make a video this week come Monday. As you guys know, in the last, last Monday on my last live stream, I talked about having a lot going on and not really sure where everything's going right now, but I got some good news and we'll talk about that more Monday. Any questions on the stain box at all? Where you guys fish? I noticed we only got six people in here right now. 
No thumbs up. What's up with that? Give me some thumbs up, man. Give me some love. I want to know where you guys mostly fish in your areas. Where you guys fish, do you fish mostly clear water, stained water, muddy water? I know some of you guys fish in like chocolate milk sometimes. Um, I want to know what's going on with you guys. I want to know where you guys fish. But speaking of muddy water, this is the box that I will absolutely get to fish the least because we don't have a ton of, ton of muddy water up here in north central Massachusetts. But as you can see, everything's a little darker or just crazy colors. So, uh, oh, the red one, man. And everything's a little bit bigger. Everything gets a little bit bigger up here. New England Bass says Massachusetts is mostly clear and stained. Correct me if I'm wrong. You are 100% correct. Everywhere that I fish is either clean, clear, or stained, with some exceptions of being, like, really stained with only having, like, that two feet, maybe a foot of depth, um, or other places are, like, clear to stained, uh, but not crystal clear. The biggest exception, I think, would be, like, the Quabbin Reservoir, which is crystal clear. You go fish any of the colors that I just showed you in my stain box, that green pumpkin, that watermelon, that crawfish color, and the Quabbin, your odds of catching a fish, in my opinion, on the Quabbin, are a little more slim because it's clear water. You fish more natural color, especially given the quantity of bait fish in there, and your odds of catching a fish definitely go up. So that's that's just kind of my take on Massachusetts. It's been working for me. I'll tell you that uh, all the time, man. So in here, I got the big old trap and tackle hooks, man. I love these. I love these for punch rigs. This is a 5 aught extra heavy trap or tackle hook. And I love me some punch rigs, sir. You pair that up with a good old bobber stop. Throw a skirt on it. Got a black and blue one right here. And, of course, a big old 3 8 ounce bullet sinker. You got yourself a heck of a punch rig. Get the job done. You fish a punch rig a lot like a jig. Um, one of the colors that has always, like, really interested me are these red crawfish colors. Again, got the red hooks on it. Can't wait to throw that this year. Um, a really big favorite, of course, in dark water. Got spoons. Can never go wrong with a spoon. And of course, another square bill. The Cordell Cotton Square Bill with that lovely chartreuse green and black. Love it, love it, love it. It's another big winner. I got some poppers in here as well. The good old faithful chatterbait. Z Man chatterbait. Always Z Man chatterbait. Nice swim jig hook, but my absolute favorite in here. Absolute favorite. You guys might have saw this if you watched the last video. This right here. This is a fishing effects football head jig. Black and blue, three eighths ounce. Look at that paint job. If you guys can see that, I hope the quality is good enough. It's the sapphire color. It's absolutely gorgeous. And, of course, the only jigs with a trapper tackle style hook. Only jigs. Only jigs. Fishing, fishing effects, man. Doug Roberts makes some crazy, crazy jigs. We'll talk more about that on Monday. So, I, you know, I got the bright colored spinner baits in here, but everything is, like, really, really dark or really, really funky. You guys might have seen this on um, my PB video. These pumpkin pie, sweet potato, whatever they call them. Shimmy sticks again. Strike King. All day Strike King, man. Um, you know, I got the power worms in here, but on these ones, I got the 10-inch green pumpkins. I just personally think for uh, for dark water, uh, bigger is better. So love them, love them, love them. Got some swim baits in here and stuff. You guys got any question on my muddy water box? Giving away all my secrets right now. You know that? Every single one of them. What species am I targeting? That is an awesome question. Probably something I should have stated right at the beginning of this video. I love largemouth bass. Um, I also go catfishing. And I also, my favorite fish to catch is a smallmouth bass. So smallmouth bass is going to have its own separate box. Um, here in Massachusetts, actually Dewey. Dewey Cash is the one that asked this question. Dewey, I believe you're from Massachusetts, if I'm not wrong. I think you're a local guy close to me. Um, so as you know, and same with New England Bass, Sean, you're up here too. 
Um, Massachusetts, man, best place to catch smallmouth is in the river. So I got to put together like a river box or a river bag, better yet, where I can put all my catfish gear, my trout gear, and my smallmouth bass gear. Um, this is just my largemouth bass box. Going to have another box for catfish, smallmouth, and of course, like I said, trout, not to be too repetitive. Dewey, you're in Virginia. Never been to Virginia, man. I drove through Virginia once and I had a blast on my way to Florida, actually. I think we got rerouted, but I always wanted to go fishing in West Virginia, actually. One of the victims of seeing, like, one of those beautiful commercials for a city and, like, I have to go there. Looked awesome. So that's what I got this week, man. I really wanted to break it down because fishing is a hobby. It's not really a science. I've said it a million times, but there are things that I believe you can do based on my own experience that can make you a better angler. If you target one species of fish, like you're not going to throw an inline spinner for a big old bass. You're not going to throw a, a fly rod out for largemouth bass, right? So why are you throwing a black and blue lure into clear water? It's not a natural presentation for that particular style of water. When we say match the hatch, I think that applies the most to clear water, unless you're live baiting. And if you're live baiting, you're already matching the hatch. So I don't know why you even brought a bunch of lures. So in the long run, what I'm trying to say is when you're fishing clear water, I think your ideal scenario should be to get as close as you can to a natural presentation based on the species within the lake. If you are fishing a lake that's that's pretty pretty clear, you know, like you can see six feet down, you know, uh, super clear water, rocky bottom, sandy bottom, doesn't really matter. Uh, you know there's no crawfish in there. Don't jig. Don't throw a jig uh, unless it's a swim jig. You probably want something more like lipless crankbaits, diving crankbaits, square bill crankbaits, even jerk baits. I have great experience in top water uh, for clear water, not so much with stained I think that more depends on the hour, but that's a whole other video. You know, fishing when the sun's going up, fishing when the sun's going down. Um, I'm just trying to say super clear water, match the hatch. Go as natural as you can. You know, your whites, your clears, your bluegill colors, your pumpkin seed colors, depending on what's in there for bait fish. If there's shiners in there, use a shiner color, use a shad color. If there's golden shad in there or, or uh, golden shiners, Use the golden shiner colors that you have. But if it's stained water, get a little more creative. You can go a little darker. You can create a larger profile for the bait that way. You can create more shadow off the light refraction that's coming in. And of course, following that trend, muddy or dark water, get a little darker or get really bright, get really flashy. Every angler, uh, I'm going to leave with this. Um, Debo's fishing. We mentioned him earlier. He said something that was super cool. One of my favorite videos of all time uh, on YouTube period about fishing was from Debo's fishing. He said um, he talked about the difference between a reaction strike, a hunger strike and a territory strike. When you're fishing during the spawn season, you're always fishing basically for a territory strike. You want to kind of get into the beds. Dewey Cash says color is very important, but so is its size. I was saying earlier, like I, I have those 10 inch power worms for dark water. It's a nice dark bait, excuse me. It's a nice dark bait, but it's also really, really big. And I can fish it like a Senko or a swim bait, or I can kind of jerk it around in the middle of the water column or whatever. I could throw a Texas rig on it. I could jig with it. You know what I mean? I can put it on a punch rig because it's got that big size. It has that big attraction. So I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, kind of glad we're on the same page. So when we talk about the difference in strikes, the the big thing is when they had Bassmasters at Lake Fork, and I'm paraphrasing uh, deep boat fishing, when they had Bassmasters at Lake Fork, they didn't go out in the beginning of the morning and cast a couple lines and be like, yeah, you know, the fish aren't biting today. We're going to have to cancel the tournament, right? They held the tournament, and everybody who hit fish, those guys are the guys mastering the reaction strike. You know the difference between a reaction strike and a hunger strike, and it's very, very, very simple. I'm not going to give you how I catch fish. I'm not, I don't want to give away too many of my secrets in one video here. Maybe I'll do that another time. Maybe 
maybe when we hit 400 subscribers, I'll teach you how I find fish. It's almost a foolproof way to do so. But anyway, um, if you're throwing your favorite bait or you're throwing whatever, you're not matching the hatch, you're just casting a bait, and you're getting bite after bite after bite, strike after strike after strike, etc., and you're just ripping fish all day, those are hunger strikes, guaranteed. Man, I went down to the lake today and the bite was so on. I was just catching crazy amounts of fish. Yeah, that's a hunger strike. The fish are hungry. They're going to bite at anything and everything that they can. Um, when you're fishing and you're not really getting anything except really hard big hits, it's so one or two strikes. <coughs> can you guys guess? You can totally guess. It's either a reaction strike or it's a territory strike. During spawn season, you're only going to get territory strikes or reaction strikes, but territory strikes are probably more apt. Like I said earlier, man, you're burning a square bill over those spawn beds. The bass don't want you in those beds. So the bass is going to attack that bait once it gets sick and tired of that bait hovering around. Bluegill swim baits are really good for that. Um, the rest is all reaction strike. I'm sure a lot of you guys have had it happen. You're burning a crankbait or you're, you're jigging or whatever, and you just feel your bait bounce off a rock, and then wham! Whatever your bait did, it hit the rock, it created a vibration, or you got it stuck in the weeds and jerked it out really quick and got a bite. You did something that that fish pays attention to. I throw a basketball at you. We're just out doing whatever. I throw a basketball at you. You're going to catch that basketball without thinking. That's a reaction strike. The pros at Bassmasters on Lake Fork on the day that – you know, the, the bite isn't on. Those guys have mastered the reaction strike. You can always increase your chances of getting a good reaction strike if you're paying attention to the baits that you use, right? If I throw a basketball at you, you go and catch it. If I throw an egg at you, you're going to dodge it. If I throw a rock at you, you might not go to catch it. You might just duck and get out of the way. So always increase your chances and pay attention to what you're throwing. That's what I do. It's always worked for me. You guys have seen me catch some fish. They're not the biggest fish, but welcome to Massachusetts. It's kind of how it is. Um, but that's what I do. That's how I do it. Y'all have seen my tackle boxes. Um, any more questions before I get out of here? I think we're all good. That's it, guys. I'm super sorry that we didn't have like a proper video today, but I still wanted to kind of give you what I had in mind. Coming up on the 30-minute mark now, I think that's enough of your time. But I really appreciate you guys tuning in, checking out the video. Uh, again, I'm super sorry that it's not the best that I possibly could have done. It's only going to get better from here. Please, 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 every Monday, 7.30 to 8 p.m., somewhere within that time, Eastern Standard Time, I go live. And this Monday is huge news. It's not the big news I've been teasing, but it's some pretty big news. And today, I'm wearing... A pretty big hint at a piece of that information. So if you guys will join me on Monday, I will see you then. Thank you so much for your time. I'm going to go track down Cletus and figure out what he's doing back in my house. Until then, we'll catch you next time. Thank you guys so 